wanted to start off with some worship before getting into our teaching today. Father God, I pray that you would just take over today, um, and it would be all of you and none of me, Lord God. I pray that you would just speak to your people, um, and just be able to flow through me freely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, actually I don't need a tissue. Sorry, I don't mean to go off right, but my nose is a little red. Okay. <clears throat> so, welcome tonight. Um... I don't know. Today, I was just like a little bit frustrated. Not today. Probably like the past couple of weeks. But um, I didn't really know like what to title it. But it was kind of somewhere in between like a sign of the times and are you ready? So whether you're an atheist, an agnostic, a Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that the world is shifting and that things are ramping up. Satan's getting bold and it's time that the body of Christ rise up and take their place seated in Christ. It's time for believers to gear up and take our position. So I just want to do like a bit of an environmental scan of where the world is. Um, so right now, one of the most obvious things is the unrest in Israel. This has been one of the worst conflicts um, that they've had since, I think, like 1948 or some number of years ago. Um, and we know that typically, once things hit the fan with Israel, it tends to ricochet around the world. So that's one. Two, the Speaker of the House was removed. That's the first time in history that's ever happened. Three, natural disasters. Hawaii fires, fires in Canada, earthquake happened about two days ago in Afghanistan, killing 2,000 people, the earthquake in Turkey. This is all within a very small amount of time that all of these things are happening. And so I just don't think that that is by accident. Um, I think that, you know, we, <clears throat> a few years back, you know, past year gave a prophetic word on the 10 years that are getting ready to take, place that we're in now. Um, and so we got the word about uh, COVID um, pretty much before it happened. Um, and so now as we're in year three, you know, when we're in the year of spiritual enlightenment, we're seeing a lot of things start to bubble up and come uh, to fruition um, that we haven't seen in the years past. So, um, you know, then kind of going into church data, a um, few uh, recent stats show that, sadly, the most declining religion, according to Pew Research right now in 2023, um, is Christianity, particularly in the West. 63% um, of American adults identify as Christians, and that's down from 78% in 2007. The percentage of adults who say they have no religion has risen, risen from 29% to 16, from 16%. Um, you know, people are on average 51%, 51.8% of people say um, they're leaving the church for intellectual reasons or because they outgrew their faith. Um, and 21.9% 20, is due to religious trauma. Um, Pew Research also found that Gen Z is the least religious generation having, with about a third of those who were surveyed, having no religion in comparison to, um, I think it's 23% from the uh, generation that comes after millennial or before millennials. So this was kind of concerning to me because it just feels like, like Christians, especially in the West, are kind of lackadaisical. You know, like it just feels like, you know, Satan has like this roster of people on, you know, his his soccer team, his football team, and 
it's like, okay, guys, we're, like, going to come out with, like, Israel versus Gaza. We're going to have all these things. Like, this demon's going to do this. This demon's going to do that. And then, like, the camera turns to, like, the Christian side. And we've got a few, like, really great, you know, people, some generals. But, like, the rest of our players are not really in position to be doing what they've been called to do. And so I guess that's where a lot of my kind of concern and frustration is, is um, just, like, where are we in, in position to, you know, where God has called us to be in this time and in this season? Um, I think that, you know, as these things ramp up, that we should be even more eager about being bold in our faith. Um, I, and this kind of came about, I was, um, at work and they wanted me to, like, draft something that... I felt like was against my belief system, um, against the Christian faith. Um, so I <laughs> was kind of like freaking out because I was able to kind of avoid it in June for the month of June. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit got me through that. Um, but, you know, this time it was like kind of urgent. And they were like, hey, like, can you like draft this? So I kind of like went outside and I called uh pastor joshua because we talked about this before and i was like hey um like they're asking me to do this i don't really know like what i should do i was like giving some scenarios you know okay maybe if i say it this way like i won't be able you know i'll be able to not have to deal with like potential backlash and you know just kind of saying it in a way that's like not necessarily being like bold about my faith and so <clears throat> after maybe like I don't know like 20 minutes you know you know ultimately you just kind of like follow your heart and you know that was kind of what he said and so I was like okay at the end of the day I think I know what I'm gonna have to do so I like nervously kind of like messaged um my coworker that like asked me to do it and uh, asked her to get on a call and uh i was like you know hey um i know you asked me to do this but um you know due to my religious beliefs like i'm not gonna be able to do that and so i was just like bracing myself and she actually ended up being kind of chill about it like you know she didn't really like say anything um to me so I don't know hopefully I'm praying that, like that doesn't you know come up again but that was like kind of an awakening for me because I was just like I feel like this is just the beginning of what Christians are gonna have to start doing is like <clears throat> in these hard moments is like okay regardless of what the world's saying what the world's doing I have to take my position in Christ and stand no matter what and I don't know to me I was just like I don't, I'm like, are we aware, like, that this is, I don't want to even, I don't want to say persecution, because I'm just, like, I feel like, you know, people in, like, the Middle East and things like that, like, they face, like, a lot more persecution than we do, but I'm just, like, are we going to be bold enough to take a stand when, you know, the whole world is basically saying, you know, this is the right way, but Christ is saying this is the right way. <clears throat> Another example is like, I was, you know, I just posted about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And I was even trying to keep it like a little neutral. It's like, you know, pray for both sides, you know, an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. And, um, you know, just posting literal news clips from what was going on. Um, you know, just showing mothers, you know, kind of like begging for their children to come back. And immediately after that, people who you can see who watches your story on Instagram. Um, and so like a few people that I knew watched my story and like immediately after basically had like a counteracting story saying like, if you're, 
you know, for Israel, then, you know, you're on the wrong side. You need to be careful what the media is telling you. The media is not telling you the truth, which I'm like, those are the same people who are like super like, okay, I got to get my vaccine like tomorrow because the government said so, which doesn't make any sense. But I'm just like, people were so quick to like turn and yeah, we're for, <laughs> we are for Israel. Um, but again, it's, it's, and it was like, it was interesting seeing that reaction, but it's again where it's just like, okay, there's going to be this divide that I feel like is coming where you're going to have to say yes or no. Like it can't be like wishy-washy. And I feel like, especially in the Western church, not our church, but the Western church, you know, we, like it can just be very divided and very, and like too political. Um, and yeah, so I think, you know, towards the end of this, which is going to be a quick express message, um, <laughs> you know, we're going to just do some uh, prayer just about the world in general. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, going back to kind of like what the world is going through, um, there are like four main thematic uh, kind of events that are feel like are taking place. And so one is identity crisis, the mental health crisis that's kind of obvious unfortunately you know we have um in our schools people teaching that you can be whatever gender that you want to be you can be a tree if you want to be you can identify as a crayon yeah <laughs> and so um you know there's that there's also the mental health crisis which with especially with covid there was a rising um i think they i don't know if they call it an epidemic yet but loneliness has been one of the leading killers like it, it's rivaling cigarettes like smoking like a cigarette a pack of cigarette packs a day um depression anxiety are also a part of this crisis that has um unfortunately according to statistics been rising um there's been a relational crisis i'm sure you know joshua and samuel we've seen that on youtube where we have red pill content you know people you know just being super disrespectful of each other people not respecting opposite genders people saying i don't even like men anymore i don't even like women just forget relationships you know all together um you know we have dating apps where we're swiping right and we're swiping left and everybody is an option and um it's almost like kind of you're just devaluing humans at that point because you have so many options. And so relationally, there's a crisis. Um, you know, the climate. I don't think I need to say a lot on that. But even just here in D.C., in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, things are changing. It's hot when it's not supposed to be hot. It's cold when it's not supposed to be cold. Um, and then the political um, international crisis, I was... At an event today at work for International Day of the Girl, and they were talking about how um, you, the UN has called what's going on right now in the world a poly crisis. So the state of the world is currently um, in a poly crisis, a political crisis. So all around, pretty much, the world's in crisis. Um, and so I just feel like when the world is in crisis, that is exactly the time. You know, I've said this before, where it's like believers are supposed to rise up and take uh, their position. And so um, I was driving through the city one night, and, you know, I like driving through the city at night. It's like pretty light sprinkled throughout the darkness. Um, and so, you know, we have these long tall light poles that are illuminating the darkness collectively producing light to lead us home um and so what do we know about light poles you know even when the storms blow they stand and they illuminate um and the only way that they are illuminated and they stay illuminated is through the connection they have to the source so while one light can illuminate one small area collectively they can illuminate a city on a hill and so I think we're called to do the same thing, <clears throat> to stand and be in a relationship with Jesus, looking to him to be the source of our lives, our strong towers, as, a light in, as lights in the world. Um, as the light in the world grows increasingly dim in this hour, 
um, as the fake lights and the things that filled people up temporarily start to dim and dwindle. This is when the true light will shine. Although these horrific events are taking place around the world, this is our time to be that city on a hill guiding people to Christ. Um, and so I want to go to Matthew 14, 5, 14. Um, I think this one's in the message. Right, that is small, so I'm going to read from here. <clears throat> Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. This is the message translation, if, just for reference. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bears, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've... Matt, yeah, Matthew 5, uh, verse 14 through 16 in the message. Reading again, here's another way to put it. You are here to be a light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Um, reading from the same uh, scripture and in the Amplified, you are, a, you are the light of Christ to the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Uh, TBT, your lives light up the world, for how can you hide a city that stands on a t hilltop? So, you know, a lot of this sounds, you know, motivation and, and, you know, we quote scripture, but it's just, again, coming to um, just real questions that I think we have to be ready for when your job's on the line because you don't support something. Are you ready to say, regardless of what happens, I'm going to stand? <clears throat> you know, when it comes to telling the truth and you know it's it's hard and it's the truth that's according to the bible in a room full of people who don't believe are you able to say that in a loving way but still in boldness um you know and so a lot of times like i try to imagine myself in these scenarios so that you know i can kind of imagine how i would do something i feel like kind of like preps me a little bit um, yeah, to kind of like see what I would do. And sometimes I have these scenarios and I'm like, oh man, I don't even know how I would say that. Um, but I just think that these are things that we really need to kind of be thinking about um, as things ramp up, especially during this 10 year period. Um, and so, uh, yeah, with that, um, you know, just kind of going back to um, one of the main core things I think that, you know, is really important that we have to address is going back to the identity crisis, because I think that it's kind of like an anchor. Like if we don't have our identity together, um, I think it's really hard to, you know, reach out to people with Jesus. And so, um, I would say, you know, one of the things that we need to do is get really functional about this identity thing. One, um, I think that, you know, we have to, even as adults, go back and look and see, like, do we have identity issues? Like, are we actually walking in our identity in Christ? And go through, you know, each area. Like, you know, if you're insecure about something in one area, that's probably an area that we need to focus on so that we have our identity built. Um, because I think that that is one of the things that it's going to take for us to be able to stand firmly. Um, because whether we like it or not, 
the storm is coming. The question is, are we going to be rooted enough so that we're not blown over while the storm is happening? Um, and so uh, I think part of that, obviously, is staying in the word. If we're not rooted in the word, our identity is going to be floppy. It's going to just snap and it's going to break. Um, and I think, especially with the media that's taking place today, it's really easy to be swept away with different ideologies that sound really good, but are not actually of Christ. Um, and so in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, I forget which uh, translation this is, so, but um, it says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. John uh, chapter 8, verse 32, in the ESV version. <clears throat> and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Um, and then, you know, even as, you know, believers who are parents, I think it's even more important that we focus on identity for kids because, first of all, I just want to say I'm really happy that I'm not a kid right now because I just feel, I really feel bad for them. Like, I can't, like, school is bad for me. I'm, I'm not all of school, but, you know, going to, like, public middle school. But I just, the battle against identity for them is going to be not for our kids in Jesus name but just you know for the world it, it that's a fight like that's where a lot of our focus needs to be on um, and so I think it starts at home and it starts with uh, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 um, which says uh, train up a child in the way that he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it so you know, when we have our kids that are already rooted and grounded, I feel like it just gives a way stronger uh, support system. So ultimately, um, all of this, I feel like, starts with believers. If we don't know who we are in Christ, we can't really help other people. Um, and I think it's, we have to be really intentional about making sure that we are in the correct position. One, that starts off with having a proper rela relationship with God. If we don't have a proper relationship with God, none of this works. We're not going to be in the proper position. We're not going to be able to handle the challenges that he's giving us because we're not even connected properly to the source. Um, and so, you know, just as a checkpoint, um, you know, I think that that's really something that we have to intentionally sit down and check within ourselves. Um, and then, you know, I brought these things up earlier because I don't know. I, I feel like it kind of made me a little bit angry because I'm just like, we have to, like, we have to do something. Like, we can't just say, oh, that's unfortunate. Like, we have to actually get in the mix. Like, I think it's no <clears throat> coincidence that, you know, Pastor Peter became a judge. These are the positions that believers should have because if we don't take these positions then the world's going to take them and then we sit back yeah exactly we sit back we complain oh no i don't know why they're doing that as we turn the channel and eat our chips that's embarrassing it's embarrassing to god and it's ridiculous like like i, I don't know sometimes i just imagine god just kind of like watching and just being like wake up like you know what i mean like what are you guys doing um and while you know People are being lackadaisical about not taking their positions. People are suffering. People are going to hell. Like, once you put that perspective into play that people are going to hell to burn for eternity, like, I just feel like that kind of, like, puts a bit of a, I don't know, like a fire, yeah, an urgency um, under me and hopefully other people to kind of, you know, realize that, you know, you taking your position is not just about you. It's about helping other people and getting Christ to, you know, other people so that they can also partake in uh, what we're partaking in. So um, that's kind of the main message. Um, but I wanted to uh, go into prayer. Um, 
and a uh, large part of it is going to be praying uh, just for Israel, which I'm sure the prayer team is probably already doing. Um, but like I said before, I feel like, um, you know, when things happen in Israel, it tends to affect other parts of the world. Um, we're going to go to, uh, let's see here. Um, Zechariah chapter 14, <clears throat> and I'm reading from the message. Note well, God's judgment day is on the way. Plunder will be piled high and handled, handed out. I'm bringing all the godless nations to war against Jerusalem. Houses plundered, women raped, half the city taken into exile, the other half left behind. But then God will march out against the godless nations and fight a great war. That's the day he'll take his stand on the Mount of Olives facing Jerusalem from the east. The Mount of Olives will be split right down the middle from the east to the west, leaving a wide valley. Half the mountain will shift north, the other half south. Then you will run for your lives down the valley, your escape route that will take you all the way to Azal. You will run for your lives just as you ran on the day of the great earthquake in the days of Uzzah, Uzziah, king of Judah. Then my God will revive and all the holy angels with him. What a day that will be. No more cold nights. In fact, no more nights. The day is coming. The timing is God's when it will be the continuous day. Every evening will be a fresh morning. What a day that will be. Fresh flowers, rivers out of Jerusalem half to the eastern sea, half to the western sea, flowing year round in summer and winter. God will be king over all the earth, one God and only one. What a day that will be. The land will stretch out spaciously around Jerusalem to Jeba in the north and Rimmon in the south, with Jerusalem towering at the center and the commanding city gates, gate of Benjamin to the first gate corner gate to Hanal Tower to the Royal Winery, ringing the city full of people. Never again will Jerusalem be totally destroyed. From now on, it will be a great city. But this will happen to all who fought against Jerusalem. God will visit them with a terrible plague. People's flesh will rot off their bones while they are walking around. Their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues in their mouths. People will be dying on their feet mass hysteria when this happens total panic fellow soldiers fighting and killing each other holy terror and then judah will jump into the fray treasures from all nations will be piled high gold silver the latest fashions the plague will also hit the animals horses mules camels donkeys everything alive in the military camps will be hit by a plague all the survivor survivors from the godless nations that fought against jerusalem will travel to Jerusalem every year to worship the king, God of the angel armies, and celebrate the feast of the booth. If any of these survivors fail to make the annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship the king, God of the angel armies, there will be no rain. If the Egyptians don't make the pilgrimage and worship, there will be no rain for them. Every nation that does not go up to celebrate the feast of the booths will be hit by a plague. Egypt and any nation that does not make pilgrimage to the feast of the booths will get punished. <clears throat> one day, the big one day, the big day, all the horses, harness bells will be inscribed holy to God. The cooking pots in the temples of God will be s sacred as chalices and plates on the altar. In fact, all the pots and pans in the kitchen of Jerusalem and Judea will be holy to the God of angel armies. People who come to worship or pray, pairing meals and sacrifices will use them on the big day. There will be no buying and selling temple of uh, the God of God, the angel armies. And then I wanted to go to Luke chapter 21, um, verse 20 through 24. Um, when you see the soldiers camped all around Jerusalem, then you'll know that she is about to be devastated. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're in the city, get out quickly. If you're out in the fields, don't go home to get your coat. Sorry. Oh, um, to get your coat. This is the day of reckoning. 
everything written about it will come to a head. Pregnant nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Incredible misery. Torrential rage. People dropping like fries. People dragged off to prison. Jerusalem under the boot of barbarians until the nations finished what was given them to do. It will seem like all hell has broken loose. Sun, moon, stars, earth, sea, and uproar, and everyone all over the world will be in panic. The wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom, the powers that be awaken. But then they'll see the Son of Man coming in grand style, a glorious welcome. When all this happens, up on your feet, stand tall, with your heads high, help is on the way. So, um, again, I feel like this is an example of, you know, when things hit Israel, we need to uh, just be really prayerful. Um, like three years ago, I had a dream. I didn't really understand anything about like just very basic stuff about like the Middle East and Israel and Palestine. Um, and so basically like I was in a desert and I was, um, it was like first person view and I had like a head scarf on or something. And there was like a long line of people and everybody was kind of sitting like uh, crisscross applesauce on this line. And it was um, a line filled with Israelis and Palestinians. And so within this line, I saw that some of the Israelis and the Palestinians were kind of arguing. Um, and they were mad at each other over like this plot of land that was like completely empty um, and just like basically sand. And so one of the Israelis people um, got up and they went over to um, the, uh, there were like two ISIS soldiers on the right side that were like in the mountains looking over both the Israelis and uh, the um, Palestinians. And so when he told the Palestinian soldier that, the Palestinian soldier uh, or the Israel, the ISIS soldier went over and shot the guy and then he went through the line and started uh, shooting everyone. So I was kind of talking to that, talking to Faith about that yesterday and I was um, talking about how I saw how uh, someone, um, when talking about the Palestinian, the Palestinian and Israeli conflict, someone said Hamas is ISIS. So I was like, yeah, I was like, hmm, I wonder, like, it's kind of interesting. And so about, uh, I would say two hours after Faith and I talked, um, President Biden's social media team said the brutality of Hamas, the bloodthirstiness brings to mind the worst rampages of ISIS. This is terrorism. And for reference, you know, social media manage, they, they don't, when it comes to government tweets, those tweets have to go through like a series of um, clearances before they can even be released. So just very interesting that he mentioned and compared it to ISIS. Um, so right now I just want to go into a prayer, um, just kind of list we're going to pray against the spirit of genocide um we're going to pray against uh division division in the church over this situation politically um pray for discernment to be able to know uh the difference between you know what seems like the truth and what is actually the truth um pray that the church takes a stand um you know pray that this conflict ends up being a gateway for Jesus to the Middle East. Um, we're gonna pray for just the protection of humanitarian aid workers from these attacks. Um, prayers for spiritual ceasefire, um, because we know that this, this conflict is not just, you know, between flesh, it's really a spiritual issue. Um, and then just prayers against lone wolf attacks from angry people. New York people are already being put on alert to just be on the lookout for anybody who might be upset and, you know, go randomly doing acts of violence. Um, so, yeah. And uh, gonna, yeah. We are in the last day, and this is the time for the church to take a stand, like you said. And I don't see the reason why the church should be divided over this. I don't see the reason why. 
if we really read our Bible very well, we are here to take over, not to take sides. We are the church. Okay? The, um, this thing I was discussing with Pastor Pura, as much as it brought tears to my, I don't know, a lot of people don't care about it. It's, it doesn't matter to them. But you don't really understand that it really, really matters to you. I don't understand the the reason why they are fighting. You know, fighting Israel. Okay, I know that uh, you know people Jew is be, between Jew and uh, and the what do you call them, the Palestinians. But the Bible says the true descendant of Abraham. Okay, now who is Israel? It's Jacob. Okay. It's Jacob. So, I don't really understand. It's Jacob and Esau, right? Jacob is the Israel. Is the Israelite. Is the one that God gave the, the lands to. Okay? And to his children. Not, not Esau. So, fighting against them. Fighting against them to get their lands is no, no. And people coming against them. They don't really know. They need to go and read their Bible. This is not about Palestine or Israelite or anything. We are talking about God's people here. We are talking about the church. We are talking about people of God. So God said in his, I mean, let's go, let's go to the Bible. Let's break it down. Romans 9. He saw I hate Jacob I love. Okay? The, the Israel... Is the Israelite is Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. Now Esau is a was the descendant of Ishmaelite. Okay. Um, Jacob is Jew. He was a Jew, and he was the is the Israel the chosen one. So fighting again, fighting about it, I don't understand. I don't. So people coming against and we're not supposed to be divided. Church is supposed to come together and to pray and to stand our ground. This is not the time for us to be fighting. It, it, this is very serious. I spoke to somebody today. I mean, this person was cursing this one, cursing that one. I said, oh God, Jesus, help me. Why are we doing that? So we're simply saying that what they did was right was right, they, those people don't know their Bible. If they are true believers, they need to go and read their Bible very well. They are, they, that, what, they, what they did was wrong. I have a lot to say. Just keep on. Yes. Um, yeah, I do want us to get into the prayer. But like you said before, we do need to come against the spirit of confusion because there are Christians on the Palestinian side and it's easy to, yes, you know, we support Israel at the same exact time. We need to support Israel with context. There are a lot of people that are supporting sides with a lack of information. There are people on the Palestinian side that are going to feel the brunt of the retaliation of Israel because of what Hamas did, which Hamas is only a sect of people that are governing the Palestinians. So we need to make the differentiation between the Palestinians and those that are Hamas. So, and there's even people that are Palestinians that are getting upset that they're getting blamed for what a group of peep radicals are doing to the Israelites because they even condemn those actions. But it seems that a lot of Israelites are against Palestine, calling pretty much calling them like the heathens when there are Christians on the Palestinian side. So we need to come against spirit of confusion because people are getting two different types of information. And we have to make sure that we understand what's going on before we start condemning someone else. So we condemn the actions of Hamas, but we also have to pray for the Palestinians that are believers that also don't condone the actions that we're seeing on TV. Absolutely. Just to, again, make that clear, people on live, again, we are against Hamas, Hamas. the terrorist group. They are not freedom fighters. They're a terrorist group. They're not against you know, just innocent Palestinians and, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are Palestinian. Same thing like the Fulanis, okay? Um, people who said, okay, the Muslims do, are doing it. Now, I'm not condoling that. Uh, I'm not saying that Muslim, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to, you know, 
But at the same time, people are putting everybody together. That, okay, the, the Muslims are the ones doing this. Okay? But it's the, the, the Fulanis, the Muslim um, radical, they are the ones doing it, like the Hamas. They are the ones killing people. They even went to mosques to, kill, to, to destroy mosques. So these are the people that we need to focus on. So for church, not to really get proper information, and you jumping into conclusion in this area, something is not right. We, we, we need to go back to our Bible. Okay, Pastor Joshua, do you, do you want to lead that prayer? That I, I think you should lead the prayer. Okay. <coughs> prayer you just said, Joshua, about the <coughs> As far as prayer for to come against the spirit of confusion, I'll I'll pray that prayer. Go to the front. Okay. Oh Father God, we just thank you. Father God, we give you all the praise and adoration, Father. Father God, we just thank you for you being a loving father. Father God, you sent your son to this world to die for humanity, Lord God. You care about humanity because humanity are still your children, Father. And you sent your son to die so that everyone can come to you, Lord God. And although we know that everyone will not accept you, Father, you still put yourself out there, Lord God, for everyone to come to you. So Father God, you already know what's going on between Israel and the Palestinians. Father God, I come against the spirit of confusion, Father. I come against the spirit of misinformation, Lord God, that is plaguing both the Israelites and the Palestinians. Father God, you have children on both sides. I pray, Lord God, that the perpetrators who are causing these horrific acts, Lord God, Hamas, will be exposed, Lord God, that you will deal with them ruthlessly, Father. And even, I pray, Lord God, that even though we don't like what they're doing or that we're seeing these horrific acts i pray lord god that they will even come to their knees and come to you lord god that they will even that you, since you are a merciful father they, that you even have the chance they will have the chance to come to you father you said lord god if they repent lord god and come to you you will accept them no matter what they've done now we do not condone their actions but we give them the opportunity to repent but if they do not repent lord god deal with them ruthlessly lord god we understand that if you're born again, you, we are your chosen people, but you already made a covenant with Israel. The land is theirs. It's covenant land. You already wrote it in stone, Father. It's already a covenant. So I pray, Lord God, that those that feel wrong on the Palestinian side, that you will give them, Lord God, peace and the knowledge to know, Lord God, that you already made a covenant with them. But even as being born again, that covenant can be with the Palestinians who come to you as well, or anybody else who chooses to come to you. So, Father God, you already gave that freedom, Lord God, that opportunity to everybody, no matter where they're from. Not even those in the Middle East, but those in Africa, those in Europe, those in North America, those in South America. Father God, I pray that you will touch their hearts, Lord God, that this conflict will come to a ceasefire in the name of Jesus, and that those that are responsible for these actions, Lord God, those that are responsible for these atrocities, Lord God, will have the opportunity to come to you, but if they don't, they will be dealt with ruthlessly, Father. So, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that those that are your children on the Palestinian side, that they will be protected from the retaliation of the Israelites, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will keep them, Lord God. And that the Israelites will have mercy on those, Lord God, that have not done any wrong to them, Father. And I pray, Lord God, that peace, that even though this is a, this, a, these atrocities are happening, Father, I pray, Lord God, that both sides will have peace, Lord God. That both sides can see themselves as brothers and sisters, Lord God, and come to you. That this will be the opportunity for your words to be preached on both sides, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. There are Israelites that are Muslim and there are Palestinians that are Christian. So let's not all think that just all the Israelites are believing, are, are faith believers. I truly believe if they understand, if they understood their covenant, this will not even happen. And that's a bold statement I am making. But either way, 
I pray, Lord God, that this, Lord God, will lead souls to your kingdom, Lord God. And Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you'll give peace to the families that have lost loved ones. I've actually watched the videos. I've seen what was happening. It, it put tears in my eyes. But this is what happens when evil runs rampant. This is what happens when people don't have your love in their hearts. So, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that your peace, Lord God, that passes all under, all, past all understanding will keep their hearts and mind in you. That this will be the opportunity for them to come closer to you, Lord God, on both sides. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. Because it's not that you say you only love the Israelites, Lord God. You love humanity. You love man because you made man in your image and after your likeness. Not Christians, not Israelites, not Jews. But you made man in your image. So, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that both sides will see themselves in your image, Lord God, and come to the realization of who they are in you, Lord God. So, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your peace, Lord God. Holy Spirit, sir, we go, we send you forth, Lord God, to comfort those families, to comfort those that have lost loved ones, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that peace will be the result, Lord God, but it will be the end to this conflict, Lord God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy, Father. You are a faithful God, and we give you all the praise. So you be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Saints in our spirit that uh, we should get on our knees and just worship God. Um, I just worship God. I just sense it in my spirit that uh, I just worship God. Hallelujah. I just get on our knees. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's worship the majesty. Oh, we worship you, majesty. Oh, we worship you, Lord, majesty. Majesty. Worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be glory, honor, and praise, majesty, kingdom authority. Flown from his throne unto his own, his antemrace. So exalt, lift up on high thy name. Of Jesus, come glorify, come magnify that King of hope, oh, kings, majesty. We worship you, majesty, King Jesus. Flown from his throne, unto his own, Jesus, your hand embrace. So exalt. Lift up on high the name of Jesus. We salute you, Sir Jesus. Come glorify, come magnify that Jesus is King. Majesty, 
Worship His Majesty. Jesus who died, now glorify, is the King of all kings. We worship you, Majesty. We worship you, Lord Majesty. Thank you, Lord God, for all that's happening tonight, Lord God. We just want to lift up, Lord God, all of the people, Lord God, one who are going to go over there to help, Lord God, and this crisis, Lord God. I pray for their protection, Lord God. I thank you that the guardian warrior angels are surrounding them and protecting them from any hurt, harm, danger, or evil. I pray that they will come back home safely and soundly, Lord God, and I pray that the people who need to be reached will be reached, Lord God. I rebuke Every, any spirit of genocide right now in the name of Jesus that might be trying to come against the Middle East, but, um, against Israel, Lord God, amongst the Palestinians, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I cast you into the pits of hell right now in the name of Jesus never to come back. The blood of Jesus is against you, Lord God, and I pray that your peace, Father God, will come over, Lord God, this conflict, Father God, whatever is happening in the spiritual realm, Lord God, I pray that, I thank you, Lord, that God, that you've already overcome, Lord God, that these are your people, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that your hand is with them, Lord God, you will bring victory, Lord God, in this situation, Lord God, and I just want to lift up, Lord God, also, um, just want to pray against any alone attacks, Lord God, in any country all over the world, anybody who might be angry on any side, whether it's Palestinian or Israeli, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, that those attacks will not go forth in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I rebuke every spirit behind these lone attacks that might try to come into fruition. They will not come to pass in Jesus' name. I pray that the guardian and warrior angels, Lord God, are protecting people from this happening, Lord God. I pray that all plans will fall apart. Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father God, I also want to pray, Lord God, for revival in the Middle East, Lord God. We know that when devastation comes, Lord God, this is the perfect time. This is a perfect space, Lord God, for you to touch people's hearts, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that just your spirit is flowing through this land, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that people will be touched, Lord God, that they will have nowhere else to run to you, Lord God, but you. You are the only option, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, there will be revival like never before, Lord God, on this earth, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that it will captivate the news, Lord God, that they will be confused as to what's going on, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that you have come, Lord God, to bring your people back to you, Lord God. Lord God, I pray also, Lord, that the church will take a stand, Lord God, that they will be firm in the right thing, Lord God. They will take a stand, Lord God, which lines up with what you say in your word, Lord God. Not what politics say, not what the news says, Lord God, but I pray for a strong spirit of discernment to land upon your people, Lord God, that we will be able to know what is right and what is wrong, Lord God. Also, just pray against the spirit of division, Lord God, over this um, political situation, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that we will be united as one, Lord God, that when people see the church, they see unity and not disunity. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Um, and, yeah, those are the main points, Lord God. I just I just pray, Lord God, that you're helping us to see things that you as you see them, Lord God, and that you just bring peace and understanding, Lord God, and... Um, thank you, Lord God, that you're with all of us. In Jesus' name. Uh, okay. Lord God, right now, I pray for divine intervention in our political system right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray that truth is being brought to our politicians and our leaders, Father God. I pray that those that are called to step down will step down, and those who are called to take their rightful place will rise up to their rightful place, Lord God. I pray that no weapon formed of fashion against them will come against them, Lord God. I pray that they will take their place, Lord God, and they will walk in in your spirit, Lord God, that they will carry out what you've called them to do, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you're giving <coughs> our president, the secretary of state, Lord God, and all parties, Lord God, that are um, just in leadership, Lord God, and who are internationally in leadership, Lord God, that you're giving them divine wisdom, Lord God, on how to navigate these situations, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you're just bypassing their wisdom, Lord God, and that 
they will not be distracted by anything else, and they will only be able to hear from you, Lord God, on these situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um.